Hey everyone, my name is Kevin, and in this video, I'm gonna be telling you how much money I made from YouTube in my first year of doing it. Now, I started this channel in February, about February 18th of 2019, so it's through present day, which is January 1st, 2020. I'm gonna tell you exactly how much money I made from YouTube ad revenue, as well as my other sources that come from YouTube. So I make videos about personal finance, passive income, real estate, investing, and reviews of financial products. So if you like that sort of thing, be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video if it helped you out. Now let's jump into it. So earlier last year, I started this channel because I'm passionate about personal finance. I always have been, and for whatever reason, since I was a little kid, I'd always liked investing and learning more about money. What really struck me as odd growing up is that you didn't learn about personal finance at all growing up in schools. It's not taught even though that you use the basic principles of personal finance from taxes to investing and everything in between every single day in your life. You learn all sorts of things about history, biology, but you don't learn the basics, the things that are really, really important if you wanna be successful and happy and retire in the future. So I wanted to make my channel about personal finance and really everything from how to generate passive income to what are the best checking accounts that you can get. I wanted to give an unbiased opinion and give information in a clear and concise way as best as possible. Back when I started in February, I really didn't have any idea how to best optimize a search engine, what subjects would catch fire online, and what subjects wouldn't be very popular. And to be honest, it still is a learning process for me, but it's really, really fun to do. Now, when I started in February, I had zero subscribers, and it took me all the way until the end of November of last year in order to get monetized. So I had to get 1,000 subscribers between February and November and have over 4,000 watch hours on my channel in the preceding 12 months. Once I was approved for monetization, it only took a couple days to actually have my channel become monetized, which to me was pretty surprising because I read online that sometimes it could take 30 days or more to do, but for me, for whatever reason, it only took about two business days to actually get monetized. Now, once I was monetized, I quickly learned that the channel that I did, the personal finance channel, actually had a very high value to YouTube advertisers. The reason is because People who watch YouTube on personal finance and trying to better their financial lives and get different financial products are going to be much more valuable than people who watch, for example, a prank video. And as a result, you're going to have a higher CPM rate, which is the advertiser rate that advertisers pay to YouTube and then you split with YouTube. Because of this high CPM rate, even though I was only producing videos that got relatively small amounts of views and I didn't have that many subscribers, I actually ended up making a little bit of money, much more so than I initially thought I would at the beginning of this year. Because when I set out to do this channel, it wasn't really to make money, it was really to just spread financial knowledge and to engage with people. And so far, that's what I've been trying to do and it's been a total blast to do. So with all that being said, from basically November of this year through the end of the year, I made $280.62 with YouTube ad revenue. Now that's a little more than a month, but really it's a lot more money than I suspected. I imagine that if I kept my subscriber base and my viewership as it is today, I would make around $250 to $300 per month going forward based upon the CPM rates that I've been achieving and the viewership that I've also been achieving as well. So as you can see, my revenue has increased day over day and it's more or less plateaued in the last few weeks. Now, I intend to grow this revenue for the 2020 calendar year, but again, my goal is to really just put out good financial information and let the money come if it comes. Now, for what it's worth, you can actually go online to sites like Social Blade, which will project the earnings that certain channels make based upon their viewership. Now, what Social Blade doesn't do, at least to my knowledge, is take into consideration the type of content that the channel is producing. So for example, if you look at a Social Blade for a particular YouTuber and it says that they're making X and they tell you and show you that they're making more than X, if they're a financial channel, chances are that's an accurate statement because the Social Blade is taking the average of all channels out there instead of looking at the channels with high CPM rates. And personal finance channels happen to have a very high CPM rate. Now, while CPM is primarily determined based upon the type of content that is being produced, it also matters the watch time and the engagement with the actual video. So if you make a lot of short videos that have very little watch time, it's not gonna rank as high as if you make longer videos that people watch for longer. YouTube will prioritize those in the search engine and prioritize those 
and the suggested video portion that is pushed out. Now, even though I only made around $280 on YouTube in my first year, I expect every month going forward to make as much or more money on that YouTube advertiser revenue. In addition, I actually ended up making a substantial amount of money on affiliate income on my channel for suggesting products that I thought were valuable and products that I actually use. For example, I recommended SoFi Money, a checking account that I personally use and thought was a good, uh, good choice to get, and I ended up making more than $10,000 on that referral alone throughout the course of, uh, of, of the entire year. So I made $50 or $100 per referral. Right now, it's around $25. So it's a little bit sporadic, but to my surprise, I ended up making a lot of money there. I actually also ended up making money on referrals with Discover and Chase Freedom Unlimited, both credit cards that I personally use and think are a substantial value. Now, when I put out my affiliate links, I did not intend to make a ton of money there, and I only recommended the products because I thought they were good products. There were other products out there that had affiliate income that was available, such as Chime Bank, but I personally didn't like Chime Bank, so I didn't refer it. And there's a million products out there, many of which are emailed to my personal email, and people want me to advertise for them, and I declined to do that because I found most of those products to be a net negative for the audience out there. I only recommend products that I actually use. As you can see, most of the money I made this year was actually by using YouTube strategically and not relying on the YouTube advertiser revenue. I used it in order to build a platform of which became valuable when I recommended certain programs to actually sign up for. So in total, I made $10,505.62 on YouTube, mainly through affiliate income, but also late in the game through the advertiser revenue. So for those wondering, it takes me around six hours to make a video. It takes me that time to actually go research the subject, write the description, film the video, edit it, make the thumbnail, do the tags, upload it, and engage with the audience. It takes quite a long time to actually produce videos, especially if you want to put a lot of thought into them. Now, this last year, I made 38 videos, and it took me around six hours, I'd reckon, on average for each video. Some took a little longer, some took a little bit less. So that breaks down to around 228 hours. If you divide the total amount of money that I made via YouTube, which is around $10,500, by 228 hours, that works out to be a very respectable $46 per hour. Now, with that being said, that $46 per hour is heavily influenced by my affiliate income. If you were to just take the YouTube advertiser revenue of $280, it would turn out to be a whopping $1.23 per hour. That is horrendous. But again, I made this channel to have fun, to engage with the audience, not to go out and get a second job for myself. And for all of those wondering out there, the income that you receive from YouTube is 1099 income, so you must pay self-employment tax on it. So it works out to be less money than actually $46 an hour would be if you were to have a W-2 income job with that $46 per hour. So you have to pay you know, your taxes on that money in a more aggressive manner than you would if you were to be working for somebody else. Now, with that being said, you're allowed certain write-offs which can help reduce that tax burden, but by and large, that $46 per hour that you bring in is going to be a gross number, not net, of taxes. So some of my goals for next year are to keep continuing to make high-quality content that I would find enjoyable if I were watching videos out there. And one of the ways that I can do that is by getting suggestions from people like you. If you leave a comment below with topics that you want to cover, that's something that I really value. I've done many videos from comments that people have left before. It's one of my favorite ways to get ideas on new subject matter to produce going forward. I want to do around two videos per week, every week for the coming year. And I don't know if that'll exactly happen because I'm going to be having a baby in the next six weeks. And my wife has made it abundantly clear that my time is going to be dedicated to our family and not to YouTube. But with that being said, I hope to stick to that schedule if I can and if I can continue making videos that I would find to be quality. From a financial perspective, I hope to make at least as much money on YouTube ad revenue as I do on affiliate income. The reason is because YouTube ad revenue is going to be more consistent than the affiliate income because I'm only going to recommend products that I would actually use and that could be no products for next year or it could be very few. So with that being said, my goal for 2020 is to make at least $10,000 on YouTube ad revenue and at least $10,000 
on YouTube affiliate income. It'll be really fun to look back on this video at the end of next year and see if I actually achieved those goals. Now, achieving those goals will be something I'll be proud of, but it's not going to be the goal of this channel. The goal of the channel is to spread financial knowledge. And again, it is something that is really passionate and valuable to me and is something that I hope to continue to do every single week. I really especially appreciate when people engage and leave comments because that's really the value that I find most enjoyable, talking to people, getting video ideas, learning the, the sort of subjects that they want to learn about. So if you leave a comment, I'd really appreciate it. And if this video helped you out in any way, I'd really appreciate you just giving it a quick like. It helps out the channel a lot. It spreads the video out via the algorithm to a whole wide audience that it wouldn't otherwise if you didn't like the video. So just give it a like, I'd appreciate it. And again, if you like these kind of videos, check out my other ones, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.